I'm uh, not sure if I'm live yet. I'm going to give it a second. It's still spinning like it can't decide. Hey, hey. Okay, I can't add a tag. That's fine. I won't add that tag. So hopefully uh, the other tags worked. I, I'm hoping that the other tags worked. Uh, I hope so. Well, we'll find out. Um, so just in case, I'm going to go through and Oh, tag everybody again because I don't know if it worked. So I'm just going to sit here until people start showing up and I'm going to just keep typing in tags to make sure everybody gets tagged the way that they're supposed to. And let's see here. Who else? That. And bear with me. Make sure everybody's getting tagged. Aubrey. Aubrey just came in and said replay. So, all right, we're going to tag her too. Aubrey. And here we go. Amanda. And I think that's the last person I haven't. I'm not sure it got tagged. So, there we go. We'll do it that way. It's always a chance. <laughs> I tagged you beforehand, but there we go. All right, so we're in, and we're going to start talking now. So, hi, everybody. Um, I am here. My, I'm Kelly Sparta. If you don't know me yet, uh, you're going to get to know me in the next few minutes and over the course of the time that we're together here in the group. Today, we're going to talk about how do you end overwhelm and procrastination and all the things that go along with it. And so there are a variety of different reasons why we go into these patterns. And I just realized I didn't turn my phone on. Do not disturb. I'm just not very good at this. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I swear. Oh, no, I did. I was good. Anyway, um, so we're going to talk about those patterns. And basically what it comes down to is uh, there are multiple reasons why these things happen. And I'm going to talk to you about as many as I can get in in the next 15 minutes, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is overwhelm. Overwhelm is, on a practical level, uh, you have overdone yourself. You have overcommitted. You have uh, taken on too much. You have put too much on your to-do list, right? So most of my people are heavy duty to-do list people, right? And so you've got a million items on your to-do list. And what happens is that over time, if you have a never ending to-do list that just keeps getting longer and longer and longer, eventually you will hit overwhelm. And what that comes down to is you need to immediately just back off and start cutting things off your to-do list and going, well, I am never going to get to that and I'm never going to get to that and I'm never going to get to that and that's really not that important and here, let me just cross stuff off. I highly recommend having a, uh, having a to-do list that is the long one and then having a daily to-do list that is shorter than you think you can get through, <laughs> okay? Because things happen, right? We think, oh, I can get through 10 things in a day, no problem. But in actuality, we get through about five to eight things in a day. And that's just how that is, okay? So if you put five to eight things on your list and you get through them all, well, you have a master list with all the rest of them and you could just go grab them. But in the meantime, you have gotten through your entire list, right? And you get that sense of accomplishment and it keeps you from going into overwhelm, okay? That's, it. that's issue number one. Issue number two is more energetic. And the reason that we get really overwhelmed uh, is because uh, we have inner children who are running our lives. And so your inner child is sitting there trying to drive the bus of your life. And when you get to a point where, so there's, there's two types of overwhelm, right? You've got the overwhelm that's just the, oh, I just can't do anymore. It's the exhaustion-based overwhelm, right? And then you have the confusion-based overwhelm that's the, I don't know what to do next. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. That's when your inner child is running the bus, okay? 
So that requires sitting down in a visualization or, you know, in your imagination or however you want to do it, but just sitting down with your inner child. And I like to picture my inner child sitting in the bus driver's seat because she looks so cute there, right? She's sitting there with this massive steering wheel in front of her and she can't see over the dash and her feet can't reach the pedals. And she's going, I got it. I got it. I don't got it. I don't know what to do, but I'm, I'm trying. And you're like, ah, you're so cute trying. It's so cute that you're doing that. And I so appreciate you. And why don't you, I'm going to help you out of the seat because it took you a while to climb up there, didn't it? Yeah, okay. And I'm going to help you out of the seat. And why don't you go play? <laughs> and I will drive the bus. And she's like, you sure? Because I got it. It's like, no, no, no. It's okay. I've got it. Okay. And she's like, whew, because she doesn't know how to run your life because she's four or five or whatever, right? So your inner child needs to be taken off duty is basically what that one comes down to. And then there's one that, that I don't often talk about, but I've been talking about a lot since COVID hit. And that is uh, running out of spoons, and this is one of those things. So, and I don't mean literal spoons. Spoons is a term that somebody came up with in the uh, mental health and disability community uh, where you are, you only have so much energy in a day to progress, uh, to, to get things done. And when you are, and, and those are counted in the number of spoons that you have. So if you have six spoons, you, it takes you one to get out of bed and one to take a shower and one to feed and feed yourself. And, and now you've only got three spoons left to, to run your day, right? Up until COVID hit, this was not very often the issue that I would deal with with business owners. But since COVID has hit and since so much of our bandwidth has been taken up with how do we restructure and how do we move forward and how do we make sure we don't get sick and how do we make sure our clients don't get sick and how do we manage and, you know, can I go out and get groceries? You know, there's so much that is, is typically stuff we don't even think about. You know, you, you don't, before COVID, we didn't think about going to the grocery store. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to the grocery store, no big deal. We didn't think about bringing our mail in. Oh, I'm just gonna get the mail. It's not a big deal. But when COVID hit all of that changed and things that were, um, you know, sort of behind the scenes, we don't even think about them, became active things that we had to think about. Excuse me. And so when that happens, it uses up more spoons. And, and so, you know, you might have had 30 or 40 spoons to get through the day. And suddenly you've got 10 because COVID took up 30 of them, right? And so now you're going, oh, God, okay. And so here's the thing. When you have a lot of stuff going on, and you've run out of spoons, it's gonna feel like overwhelm. It's gonna feel like exhaustion. It's gonna feel like I just, oh, really? I, I, no, uh-uh. And that is when you have to start to learn how to do better self-care because you cannot power through that. And if you try, you will hurt yourself. And if you try more than one day in a row, you will knock yourself out. Okay, so this is about learning how to recognize when you're being reasonable with yourself in terms of your expectations based on the amount of spoons that you realistically have in a day because of COVID um, or because you're retooling or, you know, if you're adding new things to your business, you're learning a whole new way of doing technology, you're learning, you know, whatever. Anytime you take on some task that requires a whole lot of, of awareness from you, you're going to learn that you're gonna find out that it becomes harder to do everything else. And so you just have to scale back on your expectations of what you can get done and, and learn how to refuel when you're not working rather than just letting the TV watch you, right? So these that that's what that form of overwhelm is about, okay? Let's move on to procrastination because I am just talking, my, talking your ears off, okay. So. Now, procrastination is a different issue. And, um, whoo, oh, people are talking. Hey! <laughs> Carolyn says she can't imagine what I'm talking about. That's funny. 
So uh, when we talk about procrastination, it's that comes from a lot of different places as well. Procrastination primarily will come from a place of fear of failure. Okay. And I've had uh, several people who were joining the group recently. And yes, Jen, we cannot fill anyone else's cup when, when ours isn't full. That is absolutely correct. So, but the fear of failure for procrastination is huge, right? So when you are looking at your procrastination, if fear, fear of failure is what comes up, what you have to do is you have to look failure in the face. You have to admit that you are not, um, you are not defined by whether or not you succeed. That, and I will say this to you, for those of you who are doing startups right now, let me tell you this. If you place the weight of your self-worth upon your business, you will crush it. And I don't mean that in the good way. I mean in the collapsed way, okay? So you have to recognize that just because your business may succeed or fail, it does not make you a success or a failure. And that's what I mean by that, right? So when you are looking at the fear of failure, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are primarily looking at how that failure is going to impact you, right? If it's a fail, let's assume the business fails. Let's just look it in the face and say, okay, it fails. What's the worst thing that could happen, right? And then make a plan for if the worst thing happens. Well, I'll be humiliated, okay. All right, so you're humiliated. Now what? Well, I could never face anybody ever again. But is that really true? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking that, you know, probably you could. And in fact, probably half the people probably didn't even remember that you did it. So hmm, I'm, I'm not thinking that's going to be the thing, right? So you, you really, there's this, this doom and gloom aspect to our mindset that says, I can't be wrong. I can't fail. I can't, I can't, I can't. And you have to look at it and you have to do the reality check with it. And that's really what that part comes down to. Okay. So the other thing about procrastination is sometimes it's, it's not about the procrastination. Okay. For those of us with the spiritual bent, we often have past lives in which we were killed for our gifts. And sometimes the procrastination is about not wanting to be seen. And so, because when you're seen, when you're outed as being, you know, out there, then you're a target and you could be killed again, right? It's not rational. Let me be really clear. It's not rational, uh, but it is very much about, uh, just not wanting to be a target, not wanting to die again. It is a self survival mechanism, right? And so the, the thing with this is that you have to recognize that you're going to die somehow. We're all, nobody gets off the planet without dying. It's just the way things are, right? <laughs> we got to die somehow. So the question is, does it really matter how we die? Right? And, and for some people, it's a yes, right? I had a friend of mine could not, for the life of her, press the, the publish button on her website because her last life, she was killed for her gifts and she was killed in such a horrible hanging path. You know, they had hung her for her gifts. And because she, that had been such a bad experience, she was like, I just can't, I just can't, I just can't. And I, I looked in the, I, I looked in the probability lines for her and I said, look, I cannot guarantee that you will not die for your gifts because there is one probability line out of thousands in which you do get killed for your gifts, but it, it is with a gun. And she's like, oh, a gun? I could totally do a gun. And she had published and off we went, <laughs> okay? So sometimes that's what it's about. Sometimes it's just, you know, you've got to face it and go, yep, 
it could happen and I could get hit by a bus tomorrow or I could come down with COVID or I could get killed by something else. Who knows, right? The, you know, I could get hit by a meteor, right? <laughs> there, there's infinite ways to die on this planet. And then this is just one of them. And you just have to put it in the position of being just one of many ways that it could happen. And so that's how you get out of that form of procrastination, right? Does anybody have a question about what I've talked about so far? Um, dangerous being seen as an old hangover past. Yep, I hear ya. I'm looking at these baby witch in the closet. That's a funny visual. <laughs> Anybody have any questions from anything I've said so far? Drowned, hung, sterilized, and left for dead. Oh, there's a good one. Empathic healer. So multiple lifetimes, lots of different past lives with not so fun deaths. I don't believe it'll happen, but it brings up a lot, lot of fear. Yeah, and, and, and it can, right? So um, the other piece of the not wanting to be seen can often be from this life, actually. If you had a childhood in which you felt unsafe and there was someone in your house who was um, problematic, then, uh, hi, Angie, then you know, you could have a fear of being seen because when you were seen in your home, then you were a target for potential violence, either emotional or physical. And so these, these all play into business when we, when we look at these things. So, uh, you know, it's very much about just looking it in the face. A lot of this stuff, this, this early stuff that shows up when you first launch, a lot of it is about just looking the fear in the face and making a plan. And just saying, yep, I'm willing to accept the consequences. Because basically what it comes down to is that, right? When you do something that takes you out of your comfort zone, in order for you to go and stay there, you just have to look at it and say, yep, I'm willing to accept the consequences. Yep, I recognize there will be consequences. I don't know what they are, but damn it, I'm doing it, right? And that is the thing, that's the difference between people who make it and people who don't is the damn it, I'm doing it, right? So that is, I would really recommend adopting that as your mantra if you're in the startup phase, okay? All right, since I haven't gotten any questions, I'm gonna wrap this up for today and to say, you guys, say to you that we will be doing this again periodically and keep an eye open and thanks for listening in and being part and commenting and this has been awesome. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye-bye. Oh, uh, if you are inspired by this and you're like, oh, I can't, if you try this and it's not working for you and you feel like you're still stuck, you know, um, I will put a, a link in the bottom in the comments and uh, you can just set up an appointment to talk with me about doing a business energy audit and, and I'll walk you through it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Have a good one.